Oh, the boob. Oh, he likes those butt rubs. What's with you and the butt rubs? Huh? <laughs> Everybody say hi to Paul. If you guys will watch the channel, you will know that I am not the biggest fan of self-important, righteous, pretty, important, I'm important, look at me people. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like, I'm a fan of the underdog. Yeah, I would guess, I mean, I like pits because I like their attitude, but I also don't mind the fact that everyone thinks they're really, like, mean and vicious, and that dog right there will lick you to death. That's how dangerous he is. So I'm a fan of the underdog. I'm a fan of things that, that don't get enough love in my opinion. And we're gonna talk about one of those baits today. And it's a great bait for this late summer kind of deal. And even in the fall, as, as these fish focus on shad. And I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna run you through the setup to throw it, exactly how to fish it, what types and variations that I recommend, as well as because we're not lame like other YouTube channels, which also means we're not very popular and mainstream, but I'm kind of proud of that. So I'm actually going to take you out on the water um, and show you exactly how to fish this jig, exactly what you need to do to catch bass. I'm not just going to yap your ear about it and tell you how wonderful it is. So come along with me. Let's learn how to do one of my favorite techniques that I've caught a bunch of bigs on, and that's fish a hair jig. It's a lot of fun. Let's go. Absolute stud, dude, stud. So the only crappy part of this video is something you guys don't even have to deal with, and that's that it rained last night, and literally my boat is soaking wet, so my butt is not soaking wet. But back to what we're supposed to be talking about. So hair jigs. I like throwing a hair jig because it's a fun way to catch them when they're set up in a suspended manner and it, it's challenging. Don't get me wrong, when these fish are suspended it means they're up in the water column, they're not relating to the bottom. It makes it harder to present your bait correctly, it makes it harder to keep your bait in what we call the strike zone or where those fish are situated, where they're eating. And oftentimes, if they're suspended, it means they're not either really eating or they're in kind of a negative mood. Uh, suspended fish are probably the hardest to catch but that offers an opportunity. You always gotta look at like challenges as opportunities. People are not going to always focus on catching suspended fish because they are hard to catch. And until you really get it down in your head how to fish for them, it's very weird to kind of fish for fish that are not related to the bottom because you're not bonking your bait on the bottom. You're not, you don't have kind of a baseline of where you need to keep the bait. But first thing I wanna to talk to you about with these hair jigs is the setup. So what I have here and what I'd recommend, we're going to focus on hair jigs for pretty much largemouth. There is an awesome hair jig bite for spotted bass as well as smallmouth. And actually the spotted bass smallmouth bite that at least I know about is fairly uh, comparable. Uh, basically fishing like a marabou style or, or a very much downsized hair jig um, for suspended fish or fish kind of up in the water column over rocks or in current. Uh, but what we're, what we're talking about is largemouth, and my setup for that is I have a Shimano SLX. You don't need like a super heavy duty reel, you just need a decent one because you're actually going to fish pretty light line here too. So this is an SLX, it's a 721 I believe, it's, it's the sort of faster but not like super duper fast reel. It's solid, like I said, these are workhorse reels, I wouldn't put a bunch of braid on them and flip mats with them, but they're, they're good for this application and sort of general fluorocarbon applications. I have 12 pound red label fluorocarbon on here. I wouldn't go lighter than that. Might go up to 15. If you're dealing with some giant fish or maybe you're using a hair jig with a really stout hook, which actually I don't recommend and we're gonna talk about exactly which hair jigs to try out in a second. But uh, you can go up to 15, but 12 pound is the best because this technique is all about the way the bait pendulums and falls. And it's also about not I guess, what would you say, not restricting the bait and having it fall very naturally. So you want it to get down to where it needs to be and you want it to fall super naturally and lighter line usually it does that for you. That's why we recommend lighter line, lower diameter basically. And you don't need super heavy line either. Um, th that also leads to kind of what rod we're using. I am using a 7.3 XD3 and it's a medium. You know, and, and we're catching, like I catch fish on the TVA doing this. Um, the fish you're gonna see actually were caught in Florida. It's like seven, six and a half pounds. Like there's quite a few, and I'm catching bigs. The reason that you use this lighter rod is the tip 
And I really look at this as kind of, this is like suspended fish cranking. Uh, you really want sort of a slightly moderate, so a moderate fast rod to do this. Because oftentimes you're gonna get one of two bites. One bite is gonna be a where they just click it, take it, and it could be a one pounder or it could be an eight pounder. Like it's very light how they hit it. It's just kind of a tink. The other bite that you're gonna get is sort of a, a weight bite. Like you're reeling it up or you're, you're moving the bait or you go to reel up the, the slack after a pendulum's down and there's just weight there. So you don't want a very stiff rod because you don't want to pull the bait away. Also, it's an open hook presentation. You don't need some crazy stout like rod to, to break through a, a brush guard or something along those lines. So it's a pretty straightforward presentation. I'd go lighter rather than heavier, but like a medium action sort of moderate fast tip rod. I like this XD373, maybe a little longer than seven foot too. Somewhere between like seven one to seven three, seven four. It gives you a long cast and then it usually sets up with a, a very good tip for not only hooking these fish, but landing them. Freaking hammered it. I don't know how seven pounders can jump like that, dude. Come here. Get in the net. Get in the net. Oh, dear. Dude. The fish was not coming off. Check that thing out, dude. Absolute stud, dude, stud. Saw you. I don't know how big this fish is, but he thinks he's freaking gigantic. I saw that line jump and I just reeled down. They're not like, they're kind of, what the hell's going on in here? Kind of swiping at it a little bit. So when you see them hit, it's almost like that flipping bite when he gets under the mats. When you see them hit, you need to uh, set the hook. This fish is bigger than I think. Or if he's just a, the alpha of the pack, dude. Oh yeah. It's funny when, when they're in that like five and a half pound class size, they're almost harder fighters than when they get to be like seven pounds because they're so broad. They get such big tails and that. It's crazy. So you want to see some jigs now? Yeah, me too. So there's two really jigs that I throw 90%, well, I'd say 80% of the time. There's one that just came out that I'm not actually gonna talk about in this video because I have a review video coming for you guys. I want to try it out, but my buddy Ryan Salzman came out with a, a jig called the Shuttlecock. And the jig is awesome, but frankly, the name of the jig is far better because anytime you can put shuttle and the word cock together, you're winning at life. But we're gonna do a review on that because it's, it, it's a different, it's a hair jig, but it's a little different style of hair jig and it has some different features. The jigs that I'm talking about though, when, when we're talking about just sort of general hair jig fishing for largemouth, and really I got kind of two favorites. One is a classic, and I got a beat up one down there, but you have the Cumberland Pro Preacher Jig. This is probably the most classic hair jig that you will find um, anywhere. It, it's super standard. Ironically too, I also have the Preacher Pro Jig. See how it has the fancier head in that? Now, don't tell anybody. 
but this one is actually my favorite compared to the Preacher Pro. There's something about that, that eye drop sort of eye right there that I absolutely love. Um, it's got a solid hook on it. The other one, and we're gonna go through the, the features real quick. This is my 100% hands down favorite, and that's the Gambler JTK um, hair jig. This thing is perfect. L like literally, it has a little different head um, than your standard hair jigs. But one thing that you're gonna notice really quick about the hair jigs that I'm talking about, this thing is so beat up. Dude, I caught like a seven, a six, an eight, and a couple fives on this thing. So yes, it, it's, it has every right to be beat up. So if you look at where the line tie is on these guys, it is a 90 or a 45 degree line tie. So it's basically straight up from, um, straight up from the head. And what that does is, is basically when you're, when you're penduluming it down, so when you cast this thing out, you noticed in, in the clips that I showed you, basically I'm reeling it, you know, I'll give it some, some action, some, some run, reel it, reel it, reel it, and that bait's rising, rising, and then I stop, but I'm not putting it on slack line, I'm putting it on, on semi-slack line or semi-taut line, you could even say. And what that 45 degree line tie allows it to do is it basically goes, Whoo, so it's, it kind of, falls in a sort of arc style fashion and pendulums down and that's the kind of fall you want it's it's very much a process of kind of a, a gradual wave the way you're fishing this thing and and you want that bait to kind of slowly kind of tumble down on that semi slack line it, it's a cool it's a cool way to fish it does take some practice there's a learning curve uh, just getting used to kind of reeling the bait up maybe five or six reels and then watching your line sort of semi-taut kind of pendulum back down and then it goes slack or you see it kind of bump back down to the bottom there's also kind of a, a learning curve with sometimes i'll be reeling five or six times and then i'll let it go towards the bottom for maybe a half second but I know that the fish are super high in the water column, so I'll actually keep my rod at a 45 and I'll reel another five or six times to get that, that jig up there. It's, it's something that you have to learn. It's a feeling thing with the hair jig. You start to learn based upon whatever baits you like. I like these two hair jigs, how they ride in the water and what water columns you're hitting with the amount of reel turns and the amount of sort of rod auction. Rod, rod, rod auction. Yeah, nice job, Mike. Rod auction. That'd be a great like action hair name. Rod auction in hair jigs for men you know that's whatever but uh you start to kind of get the feel for where your jig is as you get more comfortable with it and as you get bites with it you be like i saw that fish in 10 feet of water over 30 and i got it to bite by reeling 19 times and having my rod at a 45 it's something you got to play with i think that's why it's not the most glamorous way to fish because it does take some art to fish a hair jig but the bite's freaking fun dude totally 100 percent worth it so let's talk about weights really quick if you're gonna do one hair jig in my opinion and really i'm fishing these jigs pretty much in anywhere from 15 uh, let's say 12 to 15 all the way down to um 25 to 28 feet of water now the 25 to 28 feet of water isn't um usually a current situation um, and i'm using actually that was the point i'm using a five ace a five ace, and this is something I learned from JT actually, a five ace is probably the most universal hair jig size that you, you can run. It does just about everything. Now that's not to say that you might go up or might go slightly down, and I'll give you a couple examples. So I will go up to say like a three quarter, like this guy right here. If I'm fishing, say, like Pickwick, which is on the TVA, and that's a current-oriented um, waterway. So if they crank up the current and I'm fishing in, say, 25 to 30 feet of water, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a three-quarter because that not only am I trying to get that deep, but that current is sweeping the bait. So I, I need that kind of weight to get it down and sort of stay down without being swept away. Uh, at the same time, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, sometimes I'll fish a hair jig over brush piles. If you guys watched some of the earlier videos when we did some, some brush pile talk, uh, I'll fish a, a hair jig over the brush piles because there's like brim and bass over them and you kind of tap into fish that aren't getting caught by guys just dragging worms and stuff like old school stuff for brush piles. And in that case, I'll go down to, to a half ounce because what I'm really trying to do is, is keep that bait above and off the bottom so I don't want it heavy falling it all the way down to the bottom. I want it to sort of stay light and stay up and the lighter I go the more 
I guess, the more window I have to keep that bait above the pile. In general, though, a five ace is 100% a great way to start, especially if you're getting started in hair jig fishing. Um, I would personally never go over a three quarter or under a half for offshore fishing. Like, like I said earlier in this video, this is specifically about largemouth fishing and fishing in say like 10 foot or deeper, 12 foot or deeper, offshore style or slightly deeper style bass. A bedoozler down there. I don't know if he's got it or if I snagged that joker. Oh, he's got it and he's big. He doesn't even know he's hooked. He doesn't even know he's hooked. That is a big old uh, old fish. <laughs> that is a big old fish. That is any old blind fish. <laughs> Alright, back you go. Get back down there. You didn't even know you were a hook, dude. Come on. Bog, if they have any questions about hair jigs, can they, can they call you? No, oh, such a bull bull. Such a bull bull. As a wrap on today's video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you guys got any questions on hair jigs, call Bog. Yes, 1-800-B-O-G. <laughs> yeah. I would love it if Bog can answer the phone. He'd be like, hello, this is Bog. How can I help you? Would you like to go fishing? Uh, but if you do have any questions or anything, uh, hit me up. Drop them down in the comments, uh, comments area below. I'll put links to everything that we talked about um, down in the description box. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's kind of real fishing content. I love fishing a hair jig. I want to share that with you because I love you guys to get a bite on a hair jig. There's nothing like that dunk or, or when you just reel down and the rod's all loaded up and you pull back and you're like, am I on the bottom or is that a fish? And then it goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And you're like, that is a fish. And then you have a whole bunch of fun and take a picture of a big bass. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Either talking techniques or back out on the water. Tight lines. What? What?